Welcome to our fourth and final video on the biological basis of sets and sexual differentiation. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at the brain, how there, how sexual differences in the brain and um, differences in development in the brain occur, and the chemicals that are involved with that. There's actually pretty strong evidence that certain cognitive abilities differ between the sexes. So the question arises, what happens to these cognitive abilities in individuals like those with androgen insensitivity syndrome? So in these individuals you have normal levels of testosterone, so does that have an effect? The answer seems to be yes. So in androgen insensitive rats, some parts of the brain are masculinized and other parts are feminized. So how do we explain this? The book goes into greater detail um, on this, but long story short, it's been shown that testosterone masculinizes many parts of the brain in rats. One effect of this is eliminating lordosis, which you will remember from the reading is the body position that the female rat assumes during copulation. Thus, if female rats are given high levels of testosterone, they won't show lordosis, they won't do this body position. However, what's very odd is exposing newborn rats to estrogen also seems to masculinize the brain and eliminate lordosis. So why is this? Well, the answer is because it's actually not testosterone that masculinizes the brain. So through this process of um, aromatization, um, an enzyme, aromatase, converts testosterone into estradiol. Thus, the aromatization hypothesis suggests that it's actually this estradiol that masculinizes the brain of rodents and not testosterone. This helps explain why giving higher levels of estradiol um, and estrogen ends up masculinizing and not feminizing. So, now wait. So, if, it, if estrogen is what masculinizes the brain, then why aren't women masculinized as well? Well, this is a very good question. The answer is that the estrogen um, in the developing female does not enter the brain, and thus it does not lead to masculinization. It's actually kept in the bloodstream through binding with a fetoprotein, which does not bind to testosterone. So that's why this doesn't happen in women. It's because um, the estrogen is actually not getting into the brain. In addition to biological causes, we also know that environmental and social influences can affect masculinization. So for instance, the text talks about how um, a mother's licking behavior in rats affects masculinization. But what about in humans? We know that there are differences in the brain, but what causes them? In case you um, can't read the key down here, um, the areas in red are normally larger in the female brain, whereas the areas in blue are normally larger in the male brain. So we know there are some differences. So the question is, what causes these? Are they caused by prenatal hormones, or are they caused by social influences? Believe it or not, we may be able to tell the impact of socialization because there are some individuals who have their sex change at puberty. There's a rare genetic mutation in the enzyme 5A reductase that results in incomplete masculinization of the penis. This is because, as you remember, 5A reductase is important for amplifying the effects of testosterone through converting it to DHT. Again, this is a rare condition, but there's actually a small village in the Dominican Republic where many families carry this mutation. The children born with this condition are typically regarded as girls and dress and race accordingly. However, at puberty, testosterone produ production increases and the external genitalia becomes more pronounced. Additionally, male secondary um, sex characteristics develop, though not always fully. So for instance, they may not be growing beards. 
However, they begin acting more like men, they're usually sexually interested in women, and they have girlfriends. This can be taken in one of two ways. On one hand, it shows the importance of biology in this process. On the other hand, it could be that social influences are still having are still playing a role because again this disorder is fairly common in the village and there are other girls who have later become boys. My feeling that's more is that it's more biologically driven, but truly it's an empirical question. Lastly, we will discuss sexual orientation and what we know about how sexual orientation is determined. I likely don't have to tell you this is a controversial issue, and there are many theories that people repeat. Uh, two of the primary influences are social and biological, as with anything. So for social, we know that the way that we grow up affects the way we behave. So the thought here is that um, there may be something in the upbringing of homosexual individuals that differs from non-homo or from heterosexual individuals. Others have postulated that there is a biological factor, such as differing levels of androgens or uh, differing sizes of brain regions that may be driving the difference. So, there's, believe it or not, there are actually sheep that prefer homosexual relations. And um, research on these sheep have found that um, the POA region differs in the POA region in the brain differs in size between those who exhibited homosexual behavior and those who didn't. Uh, this actually follows um, or fits nicely with research by Simon LeVay, who um, did research on the brains of individuals who died of AIDS and found that in humans, the INAH3 nucleus of the POA was in fact larger in men than in women, and was also larger in heterosexual men than in homosexual men. Um, so there does seem to be at least some differences in brain size. However, there could be many causes of this. Um, as we've mentioned before, the brain is very plastic. So it's difficult to know whether this difference may be a cause of sexual difference differences in orientation, or whether it may actually be a result of it. There are also markers we can look at that demonstrate androgen exposure. So for example, the finger length we typically look at is the ratio between the second and fourth digit. The second digit is shorter than the fourth in both men and women, but the difference usually is greater in men. This is a very crude measure, but it points to higher androgen exposure in the womb. There have also been some studies that have supported this, such as men with um, lower 2D, 4D ratios have been shown to have greater penile length, again suggesting that it may be accounting for the difference in androgens. So why is this important? The reason is because in women who have um, these purported markers of fetal androgen exposure, the results indicate that those who identify as lesbian on average were exposed to slightly more fetal androgens than those who identify as heterosexual. However, there is a lot of overlap, so androgens are likely not the only cause, but they may be a factor in what, and they may make it more likely for an individual to identify as a lesbian. So while the androgen story holds up for women, it doesn't actually hold up for men, so it, it's not going to give us the full picture. So interestingly, what does seem to pre predict homosexuality in men is um, the number of older brothers, believe it or not. The more older brothers a male has, the more likely he is to identify as gay. This occurs even if he is raised apart from the other brothers, so it seems to be a biological difference and not a difference in socialization. Look, um, looking at genetic studies that have been done on twins, it appears that about 50% of the variance in human sexual orientation is attributable to genetic factors. Thus, going back to um, the two thoughts on influence, both are likely correct. It appears that there's a strong genetic component, but also that doesn't tell the whole story. 
and socialization also plays a significant role. The one thing we do know from research is that sexual orientation is usually established very early in life, and despite some individuals who have claimed success in changing it, the evidence really doesn't bear it out. Thus, most scientists believe that we do not choose our sexual orientation, but rather it's a product of our genes and our environment.